Assalamu alaikum. Let's study about the bell stage today. So the bell stage has been divided into early bell stage and the late bell stage. So in the early bell stage, the crown shape is determined. The crown shape is determined and in the late bell stage, there is mineralization, mineralization, mineralization and there is root formation root formation so in the early bell stage we have the crown shape determined and the late bell stage we have mineralization and root formation so let's first study about the early bell stage early bell stage and before we begin let's have a recap of what we had studied till now so first of all we have this epithelium and we learned that this epithelium will invaginate into the underlying ectomesenchyme and it assumes a bud stage and the invagination progresses and then it assumes a cap stage cap stage which is shown here in this image and then it progresses and then it assumes a shape which is similar to this and that is the bell stage bell stage and then the crown shape will be determined okay and this thing which is this thing right here it will proliferate and from both sides obviously so it is here also so it will proliferate and will form the root so this is the completed tooth will get at the end all right so let's come to this stage right here which is the bell stage and we'll see this in this image right here so to study about this in detail you can go and check out the previous video on the cap stage so we'll begin from the point considering that you might have an idea that what the cap stage actually is so this is how the cap stage looks and the cells and all we are having and then we'll see how it proliferates and what structures it forms so let me quickly draw a diagram So in this image we can see that the epithelium has invaginated and the margins have continued to grow so that the enamel organ now assumes a bell shape okay so first it was thought that the shape of the crown it is due to the pressure exerted by the growing dental papilla here so people used to think that this exerts pressure here on the enamel organ and it determines the shape of the crown but this pressure is shown to be opposed equally by the pressure which is exerted by the fluid which is present in the stellate reticulum so we have here the stellate reticulum which we had studied in the previous video so the fluid which is present here they exert an equal force to oppose the force which is exerted by the dental papilla so the question arises what causes different crown shapes to be formed so that is because of the differential rates of mitosis and differences in the cell differentiation time so all the cells here which we are finding here they do not have they do not divide at the same time they have different rates of growth different rates of differentiation so they have own timing and that is programmed already programmed in them so that determines the shape of the crown and not the forces which is exerted by this thing right here or this thing right here so this is the inner enamel epithelium and this is the outer enamel epithelium okay so let's suppose here is a point which will eventually be the cusp tip of the future teeth 
or let's say this is you can imagine any point here so if i'm imagining this point to be the cusp tip of the tooth which is going to develop so the inner enamel epithelial cells here they will stop dividing earlier here here they will stop dividing earlier as compared to the other cells and they will differentiate first so they will differentiate first now these cells are differentiating but the cells which are present here or here they are still dividing okay so these dividing cells will exert pressure on this differentiating cell and they will cause it to push out into the enamel organ and hence they will form the cusp tip so they will exert pressure here and it will cause this area to be pushed into the enamel organ in the form of cusp tip similarly if we have another cusp tip here it will also be pushed by these cells and again we have a cusp tip and the area between these two cusp tips that is the cuspal slopes are due to the cell proliferation and differentiation which occurs gradually from the cusp tip to the depth of the sulcus the cell differentiation proceeds gradually cervically to this area cervical portion and the cells which are at the cervix they are last to differentiate one thing to note here that the junction of this inner enamel epithelium and the outer enamel epithelium which is right here this is called as the cervical loop cervical loop and it is an area of intense mitotic activity so this area we have intense or very high mitotic activity so in the bell stage we have four different types of epithelial cells which we can see in the microscope so the first one was this inner enamel epithelium then we have the outer enamel epithelium and then we have this stellate reticulum stellate reticulum we also have one layer of cells which is present between the inner enamel epithelium and the stellate reticulum and that is the stratum intermedium so let me draw stratum intermedium here so these cells are in between the inner enamel epithelium and the stellate reticulum and this layer this layer it is very important in enamel formation because it has been found that this stratum intermedium is absent in the part that outlines the root portion because root does not have enamel so it is absent in the root but in the crown the enamel is present so the stratum intermedium is also present and it seems to play a very important role in the enamel formation so it is useful in the enamel formation now let's study about each of these layers individually so i'm shifting to a new better diagram hopefully let me draw So we have four kinds of cells. This is the outer enamel epithelium. This is the inner enamel epithelium. Uh, this is the stellate reticulum. Stellate reticulum. And then we have this thing, which is the stratum intermedium. Stratum intermedium. Okay. So let's first study about the inner enamel epithelium. So it consists of a single layer of cells that will differentiate prior to amelogenesis into tall columnar cells which will be called as ameloblast. So they'll differentiate into ameloblast. And these cells are 4 to 5 micrometers in diameter and about 40 micrometers high. So you can remember it as 4 micrometer diameter and 40 micrometer in height. Okay. 
and we know that beneath we have the dental papilla okay so these inner enamel epithelium cells they exert an organizing influence into the dental papilla so they kind of organizes the dental papilla and will help them differentiate into odontoblast so after this happens we will have cells here which will be the odontoblast so these are our odontoblast which will form the dentine and the ameloblast will form the enamel okay so the ameloblast will form the enamel and this odontoblast will form the dentine now let's come to the stratum intermedium so we had studied earlier also that it is present between the inner enamel epithelium and the stellate reticulum and this layer seems to be essential to enamel formation because it has been found that in the root areas where there is no enamel the stratum intermedium is absent there now let's come to the stellate reticulum so stellate reticulum we had studied that fluid is present inside the stellate reticulum which causes the cell to expand and assume a star shape so the stellate reticulum will further expand in the bell stage mainly by increase in the amount of the intercellular fluid so the amount of the intercellular fluid will increase and the stellate reticulum will expand further so before this enamel formation could start this stellate reticulum cells they will collapse let us say that we have nutrient capillaries here and there so we have a certain distance between this nutrient capillary and the ameloblast so this is the distance which initially we have when the stellate reticulum is expanded and it's fine but eventually what happens the stellate reticulum will collapse so it's collapsing so now we have a shape which will be something like this so now we have the outer enamel epithelium cells here let's assume okay now the distance between the nutrient capillary and the ameloblast will reduce so a new distance so let's say will be from here to here so the distance is reducing so that is essential for the formation of enamel so this was about the stellate reticulum what happens to it in the bell stage now let's see what happens to the outer enamel epithelium so the outer enamel epithelium cells they flatten to a low cuboidal cell low cuboidal cuboidal form and at the end of the bell stage which is uh, you know during the formation of enamel which is preparatory to and during the formation of enamel this smooth layer which is visible here it will be laid in folds so this will be laid in folds we have will have folds of outer enamel epithelium and between the folds the adjacent mesenchyme of the dental sac so here we have mesenchyme all over right so between the folds the adjacent mesenchyme of the dental sac will form papillae that will contain capillary loops so this area will contain capillary loop and thus will provide rich nutritional supply for the intense metabolic activity of the enamel organ so when it will be laid in folds the surface area will increase and the adjacent ectomesenchyme they will form papillae and it will contain capillary loop and then what will happen is they will provide rich nutritional supply for the intense metabolic activity which is needed by the enamel organ because the enamel organ is avascular so it it needs blood supply from outside now let's talk about the dental papilla here we have already covered it almost so the dental papilla it will as we studied it will form into cells which are called as odontoblast which is in this red thing so first they'll assume a cuboidal form so first these cells they will assume a cuboidal form 
cuboidal form and then they assume columnar form and then they'll form they'll assume columnar form and then they will acquire the potential to produce dentin one important term is membrana performativa membrana preformativa not per it is pre for mativa so it is the basement membrane which separates the enamel organ and the dental papilla so we have a specific basement membrane that separates the enamel organ and dental papilla just prior to dentin formation so this membrane it is just prior to the dentin formation and that is the membrana preformativa preformativa means before the formation and membrane before the formation that is the membrana preformativa now one thing is left we are talking about the dental sac next so the dental sac will show circular arrangement of its fiber and eventually it will differentiate into the periodontal fibers that become embedded into the developing cementum so the dental sac dental sac will form the periodontal fiber okay so the next video we'll study about the advanced bell stage in which we'll see how mineralization occurs and how the root formation occurs i hope this video was helpful please don't forget to subscribe like comment and share you can help us reach more people if you just share the video among your friends and that will be very helpful for dr teeth and will help us produce more and more such helpful videos for you guys take care till we meet next time allah hafiz